means a lot to me. And I was traveling and God began to speak to me. He said, when you think about company, they come over to your house. At some point, because they're company, they have to go. He said, but with me, I want to be the person who can stay with you and for the rest of your life. So my prayer was to God, you are the company that never have to leave me. So I need you to stay with me. How can I live? How can I move? How can I feel without Come on in tonight. God bless you all. I can't imagine my life without you. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. How can I live? How can I move? Y'all come on in tonight. God bless everybody tonight. I pray that your day was blessed. I pray that you are full of the Godhead. In the midst of Cindy, God bless you. Thank you for joining the live on tonight. Yes. Can't imagine my life without Jesus. How about y'all? I'm broken. Please don't leave me, Lord. Yes. Come on now. God bless you. I'll do whatever it takes. Come on. Whatever it takes, Lord. I just want you to stay with me. God bless you all tonight. Thank y'all for joining on tonight. I am late for the wisdom challenge, but nevertheless, guess what? I'm here. I am here. Have no fear. I'm here. Yes, God bless you all tonight. I pray that everybody had a blessed day today. I pray that you enjoyed your day with Jesus. Pray that you went to church and you got fed. That you sat on the end of your seat. And you caused your pastor to preach. Amen. Go ahead and share tonight. Thank you for joining tonight. I pray that you got your pen, your paper out. Amen. This is Apostle Mary Richardson. 
and I am here tonight for the wisdom challenge. And today is day four of the wisdom challenge. And what we're doing, for those of you all that do not know, amen, it is 31 days in October, and it is 31 days, I'm sorry, 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. So the challenge is that every day, every day I'm going to come to you, amen, with the word of wisdom from the chapter that correlates with the day that it is. So today is October 4th. I'm going to be coming to you from the fourth chapter of Proverbs tonight. Amen. The challenge also is to walk or exercise every day. To walk or exercise every day. Today, I didn't get a chance to walk. Amen. Because we were in church very a long time today. Uh, God was so good. We had two deliverance services. And I tell you, I love seeing God's people get their deliverance. How many know it's so many people that are sitting up in church and they are hurting they are hurting, amen. So we never know what God's going to do in our services. God bless you, Clarissa. Carlissa, thank you for joining. Cindy Jackson, Ebony Ray, thank you all for joining on tonight. And the challenge also is to drink water. Drink plenty of water, amen. Our goal is to get up to at least a gallon by the 31 days, that you would be drinking a gallon of water a day. A lot of people don't like water, amen. So it takes time to build that momentum in getting that water and our last i mean the partner of uh, the challenge also is to partner with the wisdom challenge one dollar a day one dollar a day for each day for the challenge so you can do your one dollar a day or you can do the 31 dollars for the entire month and that's all uh, you can cash out me at apostolic woman amen you can't this is this is just a beautiful thing this is a beautiful thing so paul said over in uh, Corinthians, the ninth chapter, Paul say, if I sow unto you spiritual things, it is only fair that you sow unto me or the minister that's ministering to you, whoever it is, spiritual things. I mean, I'm sorry, the natural things. So if you got somebody in your life and they're breaking generational curses off your life and they're bringing you revelation and knowledge and they're causing you to be in a new place with God, if they're causing you, amen, to, if the, the heavens to open up over your life, and they're giving you something that the world can't give to you. Amen. You should be glad. You should be excited about sowing seeds into those type of people lives. Amen. So that's part of the challenge. So today is day four. I pray that you got your pen and your paper out. Amen. So you can be able to take some notes because I have some great nuggets for us on tonight. And so, you know, I love wisdom because wisdom is the principal thing of life. Wisdom is the essential thing of life. And we need wisdom. If you want to, you know, sometimes you hear people say, I'm living my best life. Honey, you live your best life when you have wisdom. You live your best life. You live your most effective life with wisdom because wisdom is the mind of God. Wisdom is the mind of God. Wisdom is the heart of God. And the Bible say, amen, in order for us to be able to, to get wisdom, first of all, we have to fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, according to Proverbs, the first chapter. So if you want wisdom, amen, God bless you, Crystal. Thank you for joining. So if you want wisdom, you have to fear the Lord. And when I say fear, it's not like you got to, uh, you know, be scared of God that he got a pig fork or he got some knife there and he just waiting to kill you. No, reverence. You want to reverence him. And I've been sharing with you all and. Y'all going to know these scriptures by heart by the time you leave these lives. Uh, I love what Solomon said in 1 uh, King, the fourth chapter. Solomon said that, um, that God gave him wisdom. God gave Solom Solomon wisdom, and he was more wiser than the men of the east. And he was, so, he was more wiser than the men of the world. Amen. And I love it because Solomon was so powerful. He was so anointed. With this thing called wisdom. And, uh, you know, research says that Solomon lived 40 years of his life without wars. Come on now. 40 years of his life without any wars. 40 years of his life in a place of peace. No wars. God bless you, Sister Linda. No wars. And Solomon spent his entire life. He spent his entire life with Proverbs, with uh, Ecclesiastic. Solomon spent his entire life investing in the life of man in the life of man 
helping mankind develop the purpose. Good, good evening, Victoria. Solomon Smith is like helping mankind develop their purpose to understand the reason that they were born. It is a terrible thing, Sister Hattie, to be in this world all of our lives and not know the reason that we were born or the reason that we existed in the earth and the purpose that Lord, the God spent, uh, uh, God allow us to be here. He created us, developed us, cultivated us, and he, we got purpose in our life. So Solomon, will help, he was helping the people discover and to find God. And it's a beautiful thing to be able to find God through wisdom. And guess what? Proverbs 8 and 35 says that life don't even begin, y'all, until we find God. Life don't even begin until we find God. So you can be existing. You can be getting up every day of your life. And your life is just routine. You don't even know the reason that you were born. You don't know the purpose that you were born. So therefore, your life is not fulfilled. Your life is not fulfilled and your life is not complete. You're not happy. Amen. You may find happiness in the material things, but those things only last for a moment. You can get you a new car right now and you will be so excited about that new car. But I tell you what, after that first month, those payments started rolling around. Six months later, you know that joy, that excitement, that happiness. It ain't all too much there, y'all, like it was at one time. But when you find the Lord, you know, the Bible say that the blessings of the Lord added no sorrow and make thee rich. So when God give us something and God bless us with something, amen, there's a joy that comes with it. And there's a peace that comes with it. And so we've been talking about wisdom, amen. And so this is our fourth day. And I'm really, really excited about each and every day that I'm going to be coming to you, sharing with you the heart and the mind of God and how you can live an effective an effective life, y'all. People don't think that they can live an effective life, but you can. My son told me, and my, my niece, but my niece understands it now, but my son told me, he said, Mom, he said, are you really, really that happy? He said, Mom, are you really that happy? And I said, Baby, I am happy. Life does not begin until you find the Lord. And when you find God, yes, I am happy. He said, Is this really real? Yes, it is. This is really, really real. Isaiah 48 and 22 say there is no peace for the wicked. Satan only gives people temporary joy. But in God, even on your bad day, even, even, the, even when you go through your trials and tribulations, you can still find the joy of the Lord in the midst of all of that. Amen. Because you will have confidence. You will have the mind of God. You will have the wisdom of God. Amen. You will have the revelation of God that God will give you the word of God to, to be able to comfort you. And to be able to bring that peace and cause you to endure that trial and tribulation where somebody else is crumbling. Guess what? You're standing tall and you got a smile on your face. You're smiling. Amen. Because you know wisdom. And you know wisdom. He that find wisdom, you find life. And you find favor with God. Who don't want favor? So yesterday we talked about the, reward, the rewards of wisdom. I'm sorry, the advice. Advice that Solomon gave his son concerning wisdom. The day before that, I think we talked about the benefits of wisdom, and we're going to talk more tonight about the benefits of wisdom. And I got to I gotta always iterate this in my trainings that Proverbs, the fourth chapter, you need to go read it. I encourage every parent, amen, to read Proverbs, the fourth chapter, and develop and cultivate your child in that. Because Solomon said that if a sinner entice you, please, young people, run from it. Run. If a sinner entice you, run from it. Amen. Because they're getting ready to go and do something that they don't have any business. And the decision that you make in life can very well cost that person their entire life. How many people you know that are in prison today? How many people to know that we know that are in a disfavorable or disadvantaged situation or circumstance because they made the wrong choice? So when you make the wrong choice in life, amen. There are consequences that go along with it. And sometimes it's not all that good, y'all. So you want to be able to think. Proverbs 19 and 2, fools rush in. Fools rush in. You want to be able to think. You want to be able to think like a wise person. And so let me get into my training on tonight. Amen. Because I can talk about this. I can go on and on and on. Amen. Because I love wisdom. I need wisdom for living. I try to live my life in wisdom. Not perfect, but 
I'm getting there, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. And when I mean perfect, the Bible say, Matthew 5 and 48, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect, which means mature. It means that we grow into a place of maturity. So Proverbs, the fourth chapter, and I'm going to give you a little bit more than I normally would give you if I was out on the lake or if I was doing my uh, so rich in development and instruction. It is. But if I was out on the lake, I wouldn't give you as much as I'm going to give you tonight. But since I'm at home and, um, you know, I'm going to give you a little bit more tonight than I normally would give you from out on my on my journey. So listen at Pro uh, Solomon. Solomon says tonight, Proverbs 4 and 1. He say, hear ye children, the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding. He said, for I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law, for I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught, come on now, he taught me also and said unto me, let thy heart retain unto my words and keep my commandments and live. Come on now, don't forget that. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline the words from thy mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. So here we talk, so here we see Solomon, amen, uh, talking about his father, father David. David knew one day his son was gonna be king. He knew his son was gonna sit on the throne. He didn't wait till he get on the throne. He started teaching him wisdom from a child. He said, my father, the fourth verse, he said, he, he said, he taught me. My father taught me and he said unto me, let thy heart return. I'm sorry, retain words and keep my commandments and live. So David created a legacy. David created a legacy for his son. He created a legacy for his son by teaching him, by teaching him. See, a lot of times we want to wait till the system teach us. Or we want the world to teach our children. We want the, the, the system of the world to teach our children. We want to wait till they get in trouble. Then we want to bring them to church. You know, we want to wait till, you know, some kind of disfavorable or unfavorable circumstances happen. Then we want to drag them to church or we want to drag them, you know, into, you know, some other kind of place. And we want God to do a right now miracle. And he can do that. But it's a beautiful thing that when we can obey the word of God, when he say train up your child in the way that he should go. And I tell people all the time, if you don't train them, Satan going to train them. Take your choice. If you don't train them, Satan is going to train them. And if you don't believe that, you're walking in deception. You're going to walk in you're walking in deception. Teach your children how to think. Teach your children how to make good decisions in the early age of their lives. And we will be able to break some of these curses and we can stop some of these prisons that are being built or we can stop some of these, you know, some of the systems, amen, that they have already developed for our children. So I love this because Solomon was preparing, I'm sorry, David was preparing his son Solomon. And now Solomon is coming back and he's talking about his daddy, how his daddy taught him. And not only that, he said, I was on, he said, I was beloved in the sight of my mother. So we know Bathsheba was Solomon's mother. Bathsheba was Solomon's mother. Amen. When, 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 when Solomon, when time, when David was dying and, uh, David, Solomon had already, I'm sorry, David had already declared that Solomon would sit on the throne. Amen. And so his brother Adoni, who, who David had by another wife, he thought cause, because he was the oldest, because Absalom had died and uh, another the, another one of David brothers had died, which were the older brothers. And that was the custom that the older brother would sit on the throne. So he thought that he was going to be the one to sit on the throne. Adoni was. But it wasn't his place. It was Solomon's place. God had already ordained that Solomon would sit in, his, would sit in that seat of authority. And so Bathsheba, his mother, who was a woman of wisdom. I don't have time to get into all of that now. But she fought for her son's destiny. She fought for her son's destiny when she found out David was dying. And she knew once David died and Solomon had not, uh, David had not uh, validated that thing, then she knew, guess what? Her son stood a chance of losing his entire inheritance because his place was to sit on the throne. And so with that being said, David is now preparing his son legacy. How many of you all out there are preparing your children's legacy. Come on, wisdom will cause you to do that. 
So David tells him, uh, I mean, Solomon says, hear ye the, hear, hear the children, the instructions of a father. Listen at your father. And father, you need to be able to have something to tell your children. You need to be able to pass something on to your children besides a lust spirit or a womanizing spirit or a, a, being an alcoholic or being a drug addict. You need to be able to pass something positive on to your children because guess what? They look at you. They look at your life. And guess what? You ain't got to believe me, but just keep living and you will see the manifestation of those generational curses begin to pass down to those children. Amen. Because that's their legacy that they're receiving because that's a demonstration that you're giving them. So David had a different demonstration here for his son. And he said, hear the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding. Come on. Ain't nothing like being in life and having discernment. You need to understand. You need to understand. And understanding means you got to have knowledge. So it takes, so you got to go after this right here. This ain't something that just going to drop in your lap. This is not something that's just going to, you know, you're just going to wake up one morning. You got wisdom. It don't work like that. Amen. You have to put forth an effort. You have to study to show yourself approved. You have to ask God. The Bible say, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God and God will give it to him. But a lot of Christians, amen, they say, well, oh, I'm waiting on God and God going to do this and God going to do that. Yes, he will do it when you partner with him. He will do it, amen, when you come into agreement with his plan. I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. He said, for my, I was my father's son and I went to verse number six. He said, forsake her not and she shall preserve thee and love her, and she shall keep thee. Look at the power of the preservation, uh, the preservation here. Amen. How wisdom will keep a person. It will preserve you. It will keep you better than any jam, better than any kind of, uh, you know, in, in back in our days in Alabama, and our grandmother and them, you know, they made the jam, they made the jellies, and it was, they was, it was preserved. It was preserved for years, amen, because of the ingredients that was placed in it and the process, how they processed it, and it was able to last some time for years. And here's wisdom tonight. He said, when you don't forsake her, in other words, you cannot neglect wisdom. Don't go through life thinking that you can live without God's wisdom. It just don't work. And guess what? You're going to have the wisdom of God or you're going to have the wisdom of the world. And the Bible said the wisdom of God it is peaceable, it is sensible, it is pure and easily to be entreated. But the wisdom of the world, it is devilish. It causes us to be able to deteriorate. It will destroy you because guess what? Man in his own intellect, man in his own intellect, amen, make decisions out of the strength of his flesh. And guess what? We lose every time, y'all. But Solomon is showing us how we can win here and how we can have the victory and how God load us daily with benefits. This is awesome, y'all. So I got to keep going. It's a wisdom, it's number seven. It said wisdom is the principle of a thing. Wisdom is the principle of a thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy wisdom, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She shall bring thee to honor. And when thou embrace her, she shall give, she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory, and she shall deliver thee. Wow. Look at the benefits of wisdom, y'all. Look at all of these benefits that comes along with wisdom, with knowing God. First of all, wisdom is the principle of a thing. In other words, wisdom is the authority. Wisdom has authority. You don't need a butter knife. You don't need to cuss anybody out. You just need wisdom. And in wisdom, wisdom is going to promote you. Wisdom is going to cause you to be promoted. Wisdom is cause, going to cause you to be exalted. Amen. Wisdom is going to cause honor to come upon your life. And I shared yesterday from Proverbs 3 and 4, how the Bible say when we do those things that Solomon uh, gave those commandments to his son, the fourth verse say, and then, and then will you have good understanding. You will have good understanding and you will have favor with God and with man, y'all. And guess what? The word of God has already been tried. It has been tried seven times in the fire. Amen. It has been tested. It has been proven. God is not a man that he shall lie. So God will promote you. Why? Because when you open up your mouth 
and you're around certain people, people will begin to seek you out for wisdom. Come on, the queen of Sheba. This, this woman was a very wealthy woman. She was one of the queens of the east, and she had plenty of money. Money was not a problem for her. But the Bible say the woman heard about the wisdom of Solomon, and she traveled over 1,200 miles. Amen. And guess what? They didn't have cars back then. She was on a donkey. She was on her donkey. She had it loaded down with gifts. Wow, Solomon didn't need anything. Solomon didn't need any money. Solomon didn't need anything. God bless you, Sister Narissa. Thank you for joining, woman of God. Solomon didn't need anything. But guess what? The Bible say the Queen of Sheba, she traveled many, many miles just to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And this, this, you're talking about a queen. You're talking about a woman that's already in authority. But she traveled all those miles because she heard about Solomon. And it say when Solomon began to open up his mouth, it say the breath. It say her breath left out of her because she was just speechless when she heard the wisdom that came from the mouth of Solomon. And the Bible says she loaded Solomon with so many gifts. He didn't need anything, but she wanted to honor the man of God because of the wisdom. And that's what Proverbs say here tonight. It say wisdom will bring you honor. Wisdom will bring you grace. Wisdom will crown your head, will crown your life with the grace of God. This is a beautiful thing. Wisdom will exalt you. Wisdom will promote you. See, a lot of times we're looking for man to promote us, but wisdom will promote you. Think about Joseph when he was down in Egypt. Pharaoh, when, they, when, when, when Egypt was in trouble, God had already given Joseph the dreams. Come on, God had already given Joseph a plan. And so when the famine came, guess what? Pharaoh promoted Joseph. He placed, he put honor on Joseph. He put honor on Joseph. He crowned Joseph. Amen. And Joseph became king. I'm sorry. Joseph became the governor. He became the governor. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He became the governor of Egypt because God promoted him. When Daniel, when, when Nebuchadnezzar, come on, a wicked king needed someone to, to run their government. Guess what? Daniel, Daniel was in place. And the Bible says Daniel was 10 times wiser than the witches, the warlock, the soothsayers, the magician, even the astrologers. So those of you all that read your, you got to read your horoscope every day and, you know, you got to try to see, you know, who you are and why you have certain behaviors. Guess what? The Bible says that Solomon, I mean, David, uh, Daniel was more wiser than the astrologers, y'all. Amen. They were more wiser than the astrologers. So this is a beautiful thing because God had given him the wisdom. Just get wisdom and sit under his wisdom. Second in command, over 120 providences in Egypt, all around. Come on, Sister Linda. Come on, girl. I love it when you come. I love it when you can walk with me in this word. Amen. I don't want it all by myself. I'm coming to bless you tonight. I am coming to pour into you tonight. I am coming, amen, to release the gift that God has given on my life. Amen. To be a blessing to you to help you in your life. So this is what happened. Wisdom, prom wisdom will promote you. Be able to answer people problems. Be able to solve hard problems. Be able to solve hard, difficult cases. Everything we need is right here in wisdom. And the Bible says it is just for the icing. If any man see, want wisdom, let him ice of God. And God say, I will give it to him. And I have no respect of a person. And so now let's continue on. Amen. Number 10. Let's, go, let's see what we're going to do. We're going to do 10 through 13. He said, hear, O my son, and receive my sins, and the years of your life shall be many. I have taught thee in thy way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right path. When thou goest, okay, when thou goest, thy steps shall be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instructions. Let her not go. Keep her for she shall be thy life. So, wow. Come on, y'all. This is beautiful. Solomon is now telling his son. Solomon is now saying to his son. Come on now. He said that we got to have long life. Why, y'all? Come on, y'all. Help me here tonight. This man keep talking about long life. It talks about wisdom. Well, even yesterday, Proverbs 3 and 2. Solomon said when you keep the commandments and you hide those commandments in your heart, it say it will strengthen the length of your days. It will strengthen the length of your days. It will cause you to have long life. Ecclesiastes 7 and 17 says, Why die before your time? Forsake foolishness and live. 
This is Solomon saying this as well. So now Solomon comes and he telling us how to have long life, how to have, uh, how to order our steps and how to keep us from stumbling. Come on. How to keep us from stumbling. Our steps have to be ordered. Our steps have to be ordered because guess what? Satan is setting up traps every day for you and I. He's setting up traps every day for you and I. Even back in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, he tells them not to go in this way because mischief is waiting on you in this way. So now he's telling us how to, um, how to order our steps and to keep us from stumbling. To keep us from stumbling. God bless you, Stephanie. God bless you and thank you for joining. And so he says, I'm going to skip over here to Proverbs 20, 26 and 27. And then I'm going to come back. Do I want to do that? Let's see. I'll tell you what. He talks about keeping him, keeping us from stumbling. But listen at this. Proverbs 26 and 27. I'm going to give it to you. It say, ponder the path of your feet. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. In my earlier years, when I first got saved, in my earlier, when my in my infancy in Christ, when my in my genesis in Christ, these were some of the scriptures that kept me out of trouble right here. These are some of the scriptures, Proverbs uh, 3, 26 and 27. You're right, Linda. These are some of the scriptures that really kept me from going certain places. You cannot go everywhere somebody invites you to go. Just because somebody is having a service or just because somebody is having an event, you need to make sure God is giving you permission to go there because you can step on territory that you have not been authorized to go on. You can go into certain atmosphere and pick up certain spirits, amen, that will attach itself to you and you won't even know what happened. You won't even know what happened. So Solomon gives us a safe place here and he gives us wisdom and he gives us instructions right here. So when I, in my earlier years with Christ, I'm telling you, this is what kept me. And I was on house arrest too. I was on house arrest. So I was only allowed to, 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 to go anywhere for only two hours. They allowed me to go shopping for two hours. When I went to church, they only allowed me to go two hours. So every, I couldn't go everywhere I wanted to go. So God gave me wisdom in this. And this preserved me. This caused me to complete my probation without being violated. And not to want to go just because something was happening. It's a pun of the path of thy feet. Think about where your feet are treading. Think about where you're going. Come on now. Think about it and let all of thy ways be established. Establish how? Through the word of God. Most people don't like wisdom. People just want to go do what they want to do. They want to live out of their emotions. And that's why a lot of people find themselves in trouble or they find themselves in dilemmas. And they say, I shouldn't have went there. I shouldn't have did that. You know, how many times, I mean, somebody go rob a bank, you know, ponder the path of your feet. You got to learn how to think and wisdom will cause you to think and wisdom will cause you to slow down and wisdom will cause you to get the mind of God. And you will understand, I cannot go everywhere. I cannot be everywhere. Amen. Because my, I have not been released to go into that place. It may be a good thing, but it's not a God thing. Not for me. So ponder the path of your feet and let all of your goings be established. This is how I was able to write my books. This is how I was able to accomplish a lot of things that I accomplished because uh, there were a lot of things that was going on around me. Amen. And I wanted to be a part of it, but I had to ponder the path of my feet and I had to let all of my goings be established. God, do I really need to go and be a part of that? And God would say, no, you need to redeem the time. You need to invest that time in writing that book. You need to invest that time, amen, in studying because I'm giving you a word and I need you to study that because I'm trying to get a revelation to you. So we have to be careful. And Solomon said that he will order our steps, keep us from stumbling. Fort, number four, 14 through 17. Enter not in the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. For they, for they sleep not except they've done their mischief and their sleep is taken away and they cause someone to fall for they eat the bread of wickedness and they drink the wine of violence. There are some people, the Bible say an evil man does not sleep until he's done his evil deed for the day. You got some people out there so wicked. 
You got some people out there that are still in their depraved nature. You got some people out there, they, 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 they lust. Amen. They thrive off of hurting people. And the Bible says an evil man, he is not going to go to sleep unless he's done his evil deed for the day. And he tells us to, you know, depart, enter not into the path of the wicked. Enter not in the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. How will you know that person is evil? You will have to have discernment. And wisdom will begin to give you insight. That's why I love wisdom. I call her Lady Wisdom. I call her Lady Wisdom. And I say wisdom is a behavior specialist. Wisdom is a behavior specialist. As we get into this training, you're going to be see how Solomon was able to observe the characteristics and the behavior of people's lives. And he was able to put a name to it. He was able to put a name to it. You know, when I used to look at this word wicked, the first thing we think of, we think of a predator. We think of a murderer. We think of somebody that's, you know, just, just, uh, we think of somebody that's, you know, has broken the law. But when you look up the word wicked, don't take my word for it. Go look up the word wicked. Wicked means a depraved person. It means a corrupt person. And guess what? We were all born with a depraved nature. So if these people have not been redeemed that are trying to lead you astray, amen, you are headed for trouble. You are headed for trouble. And that's why you got to be able to, that's why Solomon called wisdom of her. So that's why you got to have discernment. You got to be able to understand what are you in the midst of? Because it's so easy to be tricked, to be tricked. Avoid the path. He said, don't even go in the way of them. He said, turn from it and pass it by. Hey, how y'all doing? Got to keep going. Why? Because I'm not finna get caught up in the gossip today. I'm not finna get caught up in the bite biting today. I am not finna get caught up in those kind of conversations today. I need to spend my time wisely. I am not finna get caught up in anybody else's strife. In anybody else, you know, wicked behaviors. Amen. I'm going to pass by that. Because a lot of times people do evil and you don't have to have a 38 to do evil to somebody. You can do evil to people with your mouth. You can put your mouth on people and you can begin to speak curses over people's lives. And, you know, there's just a lot of ways that you can begin to, you know, release wickedness out of your mouth to hurt people. Amen. Or to stir up strife or to bring deformation of character or to try to tear another person down. So Solomon say, run from those kind of people. You don't want to be a part of those people because they're going to make you stumble. Amen. You know what? They're going to make you stumble. And guess what? We all going to reap what we sow. I had a young lady I was ministering to one time. And this young lady stayed. I mean, she, had, she was taking all kind of medications. She was having all kind of bike problems. She was on a cane. Amen. She was miserable. She was miserable. She was miserable. But let me tell you what the word of God say. In Proverbs, the sixth chapter, it says, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, and thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. So we trap ourselves. We trap ourselves by the words that come out of our mouth. Ain't nobody got to trap you. The words that come out of your mouth can trap you. And Solomon said it, people are snared. You are tricked by the words of your mouth. And the Bible talks, Solomon talks a lot about the brokenness of a spirit, the brokenness of a man's spirit has caused them to be in infirmities and to have all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of issues. So you're wondering why people are always in, you know, having all these ail ailments and they cannot be healed and delivered. Solomon tells us, and I'm going to show it to you in a few minutes. It's because they're snared by the words that come out of our mouth. By our words are we justified and by our words are we condemned. You may think that it's not going, you may think that it's not affecting you, but it's going to affect you. Because we are trapped. We trap ourselves by the words that come out of our mouth. And then we don't repent. And so when God brings the judgment. Instead of exalting us. Instead of promoting us. Satan comes and holds us in captivity. Amen. According to 2 Timothy 2. 24 through 26. He holds us in captivity. Just by the words. That have come out of your mouth. You gave me that one day. So I wouldn't trap myself. That's right. I gave it to you one day. Amen. Don't get involved in people conversations. Don't get involved in all that wicked stuff. Amen. People will cause you to be depressed. They'll cause you to be sick. They will bring all of this stuff upon you. And I'm telling you, Solomon gives us a way out. That wisdom will preserve you. Okay, that's 14 through 17. Uh, so the evil man cannot sleep. Cannot sleep, y'all, until they've done their evil deed for the day. That's why they keep calling your house. 
You better look at the voicemail and say the voicemail going to get that one. I am not getting your conversations. I am not finna be a part of that. I am not finna be partakers of another man's sin. Okay, Proverbs, let's go to 20 through 22. What I did, 14 through 17. So let me keep moving here. Uh, it say for... It say, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. It say, but the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more into a perfect way. But the way of the wicked is as darkness, and they know not what they stumble. So look at the comparison here. The way of the, the path of the just, come on now, it's like a shining light that shineth more and more into a perfect, into a perfect day. So when you are just, which means that you are righteous in God, and God is the one that makes us righteous, we cannot make ourselves righteous. But when we are righteous in God, our path, our path is like a shining light. Come on, everything is bright. Life is worth living. You know, you enjoy your life. You can kind of see where you're going because you got a vision. And you are enjoying your life is being fulfilled instead of your life is being dreaded. It say, but the way of the wicked is darkness, and they know not what they stumble. It's a dangerous thing to be stumbling in life, and you don't know what you're stumbling over. You don't know what you're stumbling over. I'm telling you, we had two of the most beautiful deliverances today in, in our church. We had two of the most beautiful deliverances. And guess what? The people that got delivered, they had no idea what they was actually, what how Satan had them bound in some areas. And that's the beautiful part about being able to come into the house of God, into that type of atmosphere, into that type of deliverance. Amen. Because well, I believe when people come to the house of God, people are coming looking for God. But sometimes when we're not in that right atmosphere, amen, it is not able to be detected. But it says the wicked stumble and they don't even know what they stumbling over. They have no idea what is keeping them bound. A lot of people have no idea why I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul and I still owe both of them. They have no idea why everybody else around them is flourishing. And, you know, people are walking in their destiny and they're walking in their purpose. And you, a lot of people have little clue of what is going on in their life because they're stumbling and they don't even know what they're stumbling over. And this is where the specialists come in at. This is where the troubleshooter comes in at. This is where the expert comes in at. Amen. This is where the specialist comes in at. Amen. And they begin to uh, take analysis. They begin to take assessments. And they begin to locate the problem. They begin to locate the virus. And they begin to treat that thing according to the wisdom and the word of God. And begin to cause that person, amen, to begin to walk in their destiny. All right. I got to go, y'all. I'm sweating now. Amen. So I know I'm preaching. I'm sweating now. Amen. But listen at this. The 20th verse. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear to my sins. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life. Here you go again. Talking about life. They are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. This was one of the most beautiful things. When I first got saved. When I first got saved. And I already knew that I had been diagnosed with HIV. I already knew I had been diagnosed with HIV. And just getting into God's word. This is where I found my deliverance at. Right here in Proverbs. Right here in these same scriptures right here. Because guess what? It say. My free say for. They are life. To those that find them. And health to all thy flesh. Come on. Life to those that find God's word. So when I understood the power of forgiveness. When I understood the word of God. Where he say. I'm the Lord thy God that forgive thee. I'm the Lord thy God that forgive you all of your sins and all of your iniquities and heal all of your diseases. Come on, the word of God is relevant. The word of God is true, even in this dispensation. But you got to find the word. You got to find the word. That's why I say wisdom is not an easy thing. And people think, you know, I can just get up and get this. You're not just going to get up and get this like this. You have to put effort in this. You have to put time in all of this right here. You have to study. You have to research. You got to go in here and you got to find your answers that you need. That the word of God say, Solomon say, for they are life unto those that find them. Come on. So what you need, amen, could be right there in front of you. But because you won't go in the word of God and get it, 
You can't get your deliverance. You can't get your deliverance. You cannot get your healing. Amen. That's been over 26 years ago. 26, 28 years ago, God healed my body. Amen. I was 80 pounds. Amen. Now I'm pushing over 200. Amen. I need to lose plenty of weight. I am healthy. I am sound. I am free. Amen. Because the Lord thy God. That's why I know God is a healer. I know he's a deliverer. And I let no one tell me anything different. Because see, the systems of the world, they failed me. Even in my drug addiction. They failed me. I was in rehab. I went to in-house treatment. I went everywhere. Nobody could heal me. Guess what? When I got out, I relapsed the first day. I went to jail. I went to prison. I went everywhere. But when I found this incorruptible word of God, which is able to save my soul, incorruptible word of God. Amen. Guess what? Baby, let me tell you something. It's been over 25, 26 years, and I never took another hit of crack cocaine. I never went back to the world system. I've been running for Jesus ever since then. You know what? Nobody else can tell me anything different. I am solid in this man. I don't have a foundation in this man. I am grounded and rooted in this man. And every day I am learning something about this man. I am learning something about my life. And I say man because the Bible say the word became flesh. Amen. And it dwelt among us. He walked this earth right among us, healing men and, you know, touch, being touched by the feeling of their infirmities. So stop saying, don't nobody understand what I'm going through with. No, they may not understand, but the Bible say he was touched by the feelings of our infirmity. So he knows what you're going through with. People may not know what you're going through with, but God does. And he's the one that's going to heal us. And he's the one that's going to deliver us. So that's why silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, baby, I guarantee you, amen, I can get you to a place in God. I can get you to a place in God, baby, that all of your sorrows, you'll be able to say goodbye. Amen. All of your pain, you'll be able to say goodbye to that pain. Amen. You will take that pain and put it into a book. You will take that pain, baby, you will put it into a play. You will take that pain, baby, let me tell you something. You will beat the enemy small with that pain that the devil tried to destroy you with. You will now allow God to get the glory out of your life. I am telling y'all, amen, what I know. I'm not talking, I'm not shouting off nobody else's testimony. Amen. I'm shouting off of mine, baby. I had an encounter with the Lord, Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. I have not suffered from that day to this one in a way, amen, as I suffered in the world with Satan. Because the Bible say that my letter shall be better than my former. So I know he's a healer. So I'm not worried about coronavirus. Amen. I'm not worried about HIV. I'm not worried about high blood pressure. I'm not worried about none of that stuff. Amen. Because in the word of God, I'm the Lord thy God that healed thee. Amen. Do you know over in uh, Leviticus, the 13th chapter, that coronavirus, well, it was leprosy. Amen. They, they, they went in quarantine over there. Do you know Moses was the one that initiated washing the hands of the people with cedar soap and hip soap? Come on. So the CDC, guess what? They adopted all of this from the word of God, y'all. Everything is in God. The world system, they comes into the word of God and they get God's word, but they don't want to give God the glory. So they'll try to twist it and they will try to water it down. They will try to manipulate it. But the Bible say in the in uh, Colossians, baby, it say everything in this world, everything was everything that we see, invisible, that invisible and invisible was made by God, and it was made for God's purpose. It was made for God's purpose. So everything it gotta go back to Him. It gotta go back to Him, y'all. So I'm the Lord thy God that healed all of your sicknesses and your diseases. Why did he put a name on, man put a name on high blood pressure. Man put a name on cancer. Man gave it those names. God didn't give it those names. He said all of your diseases and all your sicknesses because he already knew man was going to put a name to it. He already knew man was going to put a name to it, but bring it to me. Bring it to me. Here they, my, for, for they are life. Come on to those that find them. And Linda, health, health, health. To all their flesh. Health to all their flesh. Everything we knew, y'all, everything we need, it's in wisdom. But Satan don't want you to read this Bible. He don't want you to study. He don't want you to get instructions for your life. He wants you to walk around like, about, like a fool. And I'm going to show you about a fool, how so many times Solomon talked about a fool. He talked about a fool. The Bible said he was able to observe the fool he said, because the fool is wise in their own eyes. He said, a fool have their own opinion about everything. And you can't tell them nothing. Amen. He said, a, a, a whip for the bike of a fool. 
Solomon said the only way they dealt with fools back in those days, they had to put a whip on their bike. So that's why you see a lot of people, they have to go to jail. They have to go to prison. Amen. They have to go into some kind of other disfavorable or uh, uh, unfavorable situation. Amen. They be on drugs and all of that stuff. Why? Because they're a fool and can't nobody tell them nothing. The Bible say they're wise in their own eyes. But Solomon tells us to not even honor a fool. He said, do not even promote a fool. And we're going to talk about this in Proverbs as we continue to go. I got some good stuff I want to share with you guys. Amen. He talked about the simple person. I'm going to show you over in Proverbs, the sixth chapter, when we get over there. Amen. This is beautiful. How the young man got tripped and how, how men, young men, if mothers, if you don't teach your child about life, they got a harlot over there. They got some women over there to teach them. Because the Bible says she stood in the casement of her house and she saw that he was void of understanding. She knew his mama hadn't taught him nothing. So she knew she was going to be able to take that boy for a ride. She knew she was going to be able to destroy him. She was going to be able to destroy the marriage. She was going to cause him to commit adultery. She was going to cause him to leave his house. She was going to take his virginity. She was going to take his masculinity. She was going to take all of that. Amen. Why? Because he was void of understanding. And Solomon told us right here in the second verse, I mean the first verse, hear ye, the, hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding. Come on, baby, you need some understanding in life. You just cannot look at something on the surface and think you understand what it means without wisdom. And God will, have, God will have this thing right before our very eyes. And he won't even let you see it. He'll hide it. He'll hide it because he got to protect his word. You got to ask him for it. You got to come out the wisdom and God will give it to you. He want to give it to you. So let me keep going. Amen. I hope I'm blessing y'all really, really good. I know I'm blessing myself if I ain't blessing nobody else. He said, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of your heart flows the issues of life. You got to guard your heart. You let too many people put deposits in your heart that cause your heart to be contaminated. So you wonder why sometimes people are having heart attacks or why people are overstressed and why people are burdened and why people are depressed. Because a lot of times in the Bible say a fool, only a fool believe everything they hear. It say a simple minded person believe, believe everything they hear. So even if you, you know, even now, you know, with all of this stuff that's going on with Donald Trump now and the politics and all of this thing that's going on, I am so blessing you all. Yes, you are blessed. Amen. Thank you, woman of God. All of this stuff that's going on with Donald Trump and with the election. And do you know some people are actually sick? Some people are actually sick. Some people are actually so angry. They are so depressed. I mean, they are, they're just all over Facebook. They're actually wishing murder on this man. They're actually praying that the man die. That's an evil person, y'all. That is an evil and that is a wicked person. And guess what? God, the Bible said... The Bible says you should not even rejoice in another man's calamity. You should not even rejoice in that. Because why? That same thing will happen to you. The same thing will happen to you. The Bible says if you break the hedge, a serpent will bite you. So the same thing will happen to you that you are actually wishing on somebody else. And uh, God, will call that, God will cause that same thing to happen to you. And the Bible says he will even laugh at you in your calamity. So you got a lot of people that are very wicked. And you got a lot of people that are speaking evil. You know, we shouldn't speak evil against another man. That's why the Bible said, run from these evil people. Run from these conversations. I remember I heard a young lady, and I'm not going to call her name. But about a couple of months ago, they was doing an event called Black Lives Matter. And she was, oh, she was one of the speakers. And you know what she said? She said, she said these words right here. She said, when I get through with so-and-so, when I get through with so-and-so, when I get through with this person, tearing this person down, she said, they're going to they gonna have to tote me away from here. And I lie not to y'all. Before the woman of God got through speaking, they had to, they, 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 she had to, they, they had to go bring her a chair to sit down in. They had to go bring her a chair to sit down in. And they eventually had to take her inside and put water all over her body. Amen. To just try to, you know, calm the, 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 the thing down, to calm whatever she was going through with down. Because she had got so overwhelmed. But guess what? She said it. She said it. She said, when I get through with so-and-so. She said, when I get through with so-and-so, they're going to have to tote me away from here. And they did. They did. They did. Because you cannot, amen, you cannot speak evil over another person. The Bible said, if you break the hedge, a serpent will bite you. You are going to reap what you sow. 
You speak evil on somebody else. The Bible says, by our words are we justified. And by our words are we condemned. We are snared by the words that come out of our mouth. So we have to learn how to be wise in our conversations. We have to be wise, you know, in, you know, what we are saying. And guess what? Donald Trump is a human being just like you and I. You without sin, cast the first stone. Come on. You without sin, cast the first stone. And everybody had to leave. Everybody had to leave. And the Bible said we don't even supposed to speak evil over a dignitary. Don't speak evil over a dignitary. Don't you know God would judge you for that? He would judge you for that. Amen. So we got to be careful what we say. The Bible say pray for those that are in authority. That they may lead a quiet and a peaceful life. But people are not even valuing God's word. They have no respect for God's word. Why? Because they want what they want. And you cannot control God, y'all. You cannot control God. Amen. So we need to pray, God, let your will be done. Thy and I'm not taking up for Donald Trump either because I know he has some very, he has some very distasteful words that come out of his mouth. He has some, he has some not so great attitude. Yes, we all do because we're all depraved. We're all flawed in some type of way. He's just in a greater seat of authority than some of us are. But right in our own sphere of influence, some of us are jacked up and some of us are messed up. Amen. So the pot can't talk about the kettle. So I'm moving on with y'all. Amen. But watch your heart. It's a guard your heart because out of your heart flows the issues of life. Amen. It's a put away from the a frow a froward mouth. Here it is right here. Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips. Put it far from thee. Solomon is trying to tell you how to be healed here. You will be amazed. I'm telling you why so many people are sick and so many people are down. You know, the Bible says a merry heart doeth good like medicine. It says, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. A broken spirit dries up the bones. So you wonder why people got cancer. You wonder why people got inflammation. You wonder why people got all these different ailments. Why they on these canes. Why they can't hardly walk. Why they got arthritis and all of this stuff. We wonder where it coming from. But a broken spirit dries up the bones. And when your bones are dry, of course, they are going to be they're going to be infected. Hello. It's a let. So put away that from your lip. Let thy eyes look right on. And let thy eyelids look straight before thee. So Solomon is giving us instruction. Even with our eyes. Even with our eyes, y'all. Let thy eyelids look right on. Look in the right place. Amen. Be mindful of what you're looking at. Be mindful of what you are a part of. And look straight. And let thy eyelids... He talk about the eyes and he talks about the eyelids here. Amen. Let it be straight before thee. Amen. So this has been Proverbs, the fourth chapter. And like I say, I don't normally do the whole chapter. I normally just come in and pull out a few verses. Amen. But since I'm home tonight, amen, I didn't get a chance to even go walk in myself today. Amen. Because like I said, we were late at the church. I didn't even get home to dark, y'all. I didn't even walk in my house until dark. And I left home this morning about 9.30. About 9.30 this morning, didn't come back until dark. And that's what that's the life of a preacher. That's the life of a preacher. Sometimes you can't leave church just like that. Because people have issues and people have problems. And, you know, God called us to take care of those people. And I love what I do. Because the grace of God is upon me to do this. So I love what I do. Um, I love what I do. And, you know, I, I'm enjoying my journey. In the Lord, amen, and I'm very grateful for what God is doing, and I get an honor. I'm honored to be able to share these 31 days with you, amen, wisdom from the book of Proverbs, amen, that uh, Solomon, God, God gave Solomon, and 40 years, 40 years, amen, uh, Solomon lived a wonderful life, Solomon lived a wonderful life, uh, donation, da, 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 da. Solomon lived a wonderful life, amen, and he had no wars, and he taught people mm -hmm. all his life. He taught people all his life about their purpose. And that's why he talks about over in the book of Ecclesiastic. He knew what it was like. You know, nothing under the sun had not happened because he's seen all of this. And I love how Solomon was even able to discern the lazy man. He said he passed by the house of a lazy man and he discerned that a lazy man lived there. He said the man house, he said the yard wasn't cut. The fence was broken down, you know. And so he said he preserved, he, he discerned that a lazy man lived there. He was able to take the wisdom of God, the, the features that he had, the, 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 the analysis that he had, and he was able to put together those behaviors. He saw those behaviors, and out of that, he was able to make a determination. 
So I'm telling you, if you want to be smart in God, you want to be brilliant in God, amen, you want to be a troubleshooter in God, amen, you want to be able to help people in God, you need the wisdom of God. And so this is a great book to study. This is a great time, amen, to allow God to impart into you, amen. And so I want you to, to impart into me as well. So you're $1 a day or $31 for the entire month. Amen. You can get this on TV. You're not going to get this, amen, in the doctor's office or out in the systems of the world. Amen. So God has graced me for this moment, this assignment. I'm loving every minute of it. And so I just want to say I thank y'all. I'm trying to look at some of y'all comments. Looking under Jesus, come to truth. Thank you, Linda, for all of your comments tonight. Thank you, Narissa. Amen. For your comments. Thank everybody for joining. Thank y'all for sharing. Sister Aretha, I saw you came in. Um, I saw you came in a few minutes ago, so I thank you all for being a part of it. And I can't wait. Tomorrow, we're going to do Proverbs, the fifth chapter, and we're going to talk about warnings about sexual sin. We're going to see what Solomon had to say, and who would know better than Solomon? He had over a thousand women, y'all. He had over a thousand wives. He allowed all of those women. He had the wisdom, but he allowed all of those women to take him down in the end. Amen. From all the wisdom that he had. So tomorrow, we're going to be talking about warning against sexual sin. So you all make sure you want to be on it. Make sure you know somebody that's struggling, amen, with soul ties or somebody that's struggling with lust, amen, somebody that's struggling, they can't keep their pants zipped up and she can't keep her legs closed, amen, and she just running from relationship to relationship, amen. We're going to tell you what Solomon says about warning against sexual sin, against sexual sin. So let's see what the Bible has to say about all this. Amen. People can talk, but let us hear God. Let us hear the final conclusion of the matter. So God bless y'all. Amen. I got to go. I love you all. I pray that God would give you sweet, sweet sleep on tonight. Amen. I pray that God would give you prophetic dreams on tonight. I pray that the Holy Spirit will begin to give you sweet, sweet sleep. A lot of people can't sleep. A lot of people can't sleep. A lot of people have a lot of problems sleeping. But the Bible say, you know, he would give his beloved sweet, sweet sleep. And so a lot of people have to take medicine just to go to sleep. God said he would give his beloved sweet, sweet sleep. I have no problem at all sleeping, y'all. Amen. That is one of the most beautiful times I have with God is to be able to sleep. And I'm so grateful that I don't have to take any kind of meds or anything like that. He don't want you to take any of them either. He want to give you sweet, sweet sleep. I pray that you take this word tonight. Parents out there, start training your children up in the word of God. Start training your kids up in the ways of God. Amen. And you won't have to worry about the systems of the world getting your children. Or the word of God say, when you train them up, when they young, he say, when they get old, he said, even if they go astray, they will not be able to stay. If you think about the prodigal son, he was raised up in the ways of God. And when he got out there in the hog pen and when he got to the lowest point of his life, you know what he said? I'm going back to my father's house. I am going back to where I was raised up to know about the Lord because guess what? I don't have to live my life like this right here. So God wants the best life for his people. He wants us to live a beautiful life. And he don't want us to wait till we get to heaven. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven. You can have heaven right here on earth. And so I'm chuckled every day. I'm tickled every day how God allowed me to sit by, amen, and be able to ask him questions and be able to discern wisdom, knowing that wisdom is at the gate. She is waiting, amen. She's waiting to give us answers. She cries out in the street saying, please let me help you make that decision. Please let me show you how to invest. Please let me show you this is a scam. Please let me show you how to be safe and how I want to preserve you. And I want to give you long life. I want to give you a good life. And I want you to have a healthy life. Amen. I don't have, I don't have any, I don't take any medicine, y'all. I take one supplement, supplement. I'm 63 years old. I take no medicine. Amen. I take no medicine at all. The pharmacy's not getting my money. Them doctors, they're not getting my money. Amen. I'm going to go in God's word. And he told them over in Exodus 15 and 26, and I'm finna go for real. He told Moses to tell the children of Israel, if you, owe my, if you obey my commandments and you do all that I command you to do, he said all the diseases 
that came up on the Egyptians, that I put up on the Egyptians, I would not allow them to touch you. Psalms 91, we live in the secret place. We live in the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. He hides us. He hides us in his presence. He hides us in that place of protection. And that's what God want to do for us as human beings. God want to protect his people. He told them over in Exodus, in the Exodus in 19 chapter. He told, I think in Exodus 19 and 5. He said, I brought you out on eagle wings. I brought you out on eagle wings. He said, and I, if you obey my word and you obey my statutes, I will cause you to be a peculiar treasure unto me. So he brought them out first class, y'all. He brought them out on the eagle. He brought them out on one of the most, one of the one of those powerful animals. Amen. That was that was in the world. He wanted to make sure that they got delivered out of Egypt and they came out right. So he said, I brought you out. First class. Amen. I brought you out. That you would be a peculiar people to me. And if you would do this, I would do this. Amen. So God bless you all. I pray. I love you all. Speak blessings over your life. If you're not saved, amen, I encourage you. Salvation is the place that you want to be at right now in God. That is the safest place anybody can be at. And don't let people tell you that church is boring. You just probably, you might be part of a boring church or you might be part of a dead church, but God is not boring. There is not one dull minute in this gospel, y'all. Amen. I'm telling you, once you start to study this word and God started opening up your eyes, I'm telling you, you would not want to put this Bible down. You would eat this Bible. You would sleep this Bible. You would be like Job say, the word of God has became more necessary to me than the food that I eat. So give your life to the Lord tonight and begin to live your best life. Because remember Proverbs 8 and 35, life does not begin until you start to serve in the Lord. And he that find God, you find life and you find favor with the Lord. And Paul said over in Romans 6 and 4, it's a whole nother new life. So you have to learn how to live all over again. But remember, he brought us out on eagle wings that we'll be a peculiar treasure unto him. And nothing by no means will be able to harm us or be able to touch us once you live in that secret place and you live in the shadow of the Almighty. The enemy will stumble and fall. God will allow your enemy to stumble and fall right in the very presence of your very eyes. Amen. So God bless y'all. I love y'all. And I'll see y'all on tomorrow. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful night in Jesus name.